In this segment, we're going to learn about Cutting Master 2. Now, as you recall, in the out-of-the-box setup, we learned how to basically install and set up a Cutting Master 2 for a quick output. In this session, we're going to learn Cutting Master 2 in detail. In other words, we're going to show you all the options and features it has so you can make the best use of it. But first, let me just explain the different components that are with Cutting Master 2. Um, it, it's kind of good to know because you understand what the purpose of each component is. There are two components to Cutting Master 2. The first is the plugin. This is a plugin to Illustrator or Corel Draw. And what I mean by that is that they work right within Illustrator and Corel Draw. In other words, they're not a separate program. You have to have either one of these programs to, to use Cutting Master 2. But once you have a design in either one of these packages, then what Cutting Master 2 does is it preps it, gets the sizing right, and gets all the different little uh, knickknacks that are needed to make your output correct. And then what it does is it goes ahead and sends it to a queue. And this queue just basically queues up all the jobs. And the queue, its basic function is number one is to send the jobs to the plotter you can save the jobs if they're repeated jobs over and over again and you have a couple other options which we'll go into then of course that's sent to the plotter well let me show you how these two components work and how they work with each other well let's look at the two components that I was talking about first there's a component that's a plug into both Illustrator and Corel Draw let me show you how to get to it in Adobe Illustrator from the file pull down menu come down to Cutting Master 2 and go to cut plot. Now we'll talk about registration marks later on in another vi video segment under under print and cut. What we want to go to is cut and plot. Let me stop there and let me go to Corel Draw and show you how it's done there. In Corel Draw it's a little bit different. Sometimes we might have a habit of thinking going to file and then we don't see any of the cutting master here. Where you can access Cutting Master is right under the application launcher, which is this little icon right here. Now this is X4. I believe in uh, X3 and Corel Draw 12, this looks like a little rocket. So basically it's the application launcher that you want to go to. You click on the side button and you got all these different applications that you can launch. But notice here, you got registration marks and cut plot, just like you have in Illustrator. Okay, let me go back to Illustrator now. Let me go ahead and open up Cutting Master 2 so you can actually see the plugin itself. Cut and plot. And this little dialog box comes up. And then, of course, the plugin. Let me put this is the actual queue right here, this little box that you see. Okay, let me go ahead and minimize that and show you the actual plugin. This plugin is an actual, what we call a pre flight. In other words, you're checking all your settings before you take off. In other words, before you send it to the plotter. You've got different sizes that you can check over. You have a window here that you can actually visually see what's going on. You have different tabs here for different options that you can have, such as paneling or tiling. Uh, you have an advanced tab in case you want to do some special stuff like weed borders and, and uh, sorting and optimize the cutting order and uh, set up the settings for the plotter. Uh, do we want to work in inches and so forth? I'll be going into details in just a minute, but th that's the first component. And then obviously the second component is the actual Cutting Master Q that I, we were talking about. And there's a couple options here that you want to check out. First is the help. What the help will do is if I click on this and click on help topics, what it does is it actually opens up an Acrobat PDF file of the actual manual. And here's where you can actually go ahead and do searches for any questions you have, um, how to set it up, how to set it up in Corel Draw or Illustrator. And you have a whole slew of different options here that you can take advantage of. Now, normally I wouldn't bother with a table of contents, but you can actually go through here and they've got it spaced out enough to make it understandable. One other thing, this is probably the best tool right here in this section, that little box, because that's your search box. So you can type in any subject in here, and it'll bring you to that section or wherever that word occurs. I guarantee you half the technicians in the world learn their information this way. So take advantage of the help. Well, let me go ahead and close this out. Okay, and let me show you some of the things that you get with your queue. 
First of all, you can set up your driver. So if you want to change the setup for some reason, let's say you buy a bigger graphic plotter, or later on you buy a different graphic plotter, you can change the setup. Now keep in mind that this queue with Cutting Master 2, you can only drive one machine at a time. If you need to drive more, I would recommend getting a program such as FlexiSign or, or one of the other programs that allow you to do uh, several drivers at once. But for right now, it allows you to have one driver. So if you want to change that driver, you can. But when you're doing setup, one of the things I want to bring out is that if you come down here looking for the SC2250, you'll find it right here. But don't get confused with the 2240, and you really don't want to choose a different flatbed other than the 2250. The reason is, is because the 2250 has features such as print and cut that you won't get on the 2240. So it's just best to use the driver because oftentimes when the driver is written, it's taking advantage of all the features that the plotter has, which is a benefit to you. So I'll go ahead and choose the 2250-60. That's the one I'm using. I'll click on Next. Uh, the setup name is as you see it. I'll click on Next again. Here's where choosing my port is. Now this is important. The reason is is because you may not be using the same port. Now in most cases generally people use USB these days but if you have a serial port that you're trying to use out of COM1 or COM2 so it gives you a couple choices in which you can choose. Okay, I'll go ahead and click finish and then once I'm finished then it shows me in the queue which driver I'm currently using which you can see right here is the FC2250-60. Now that you set up your driver, if I click on setup, there's another option here. This is uh, in case, for instance, if you, let's say you set up your your uh, port to Graphtec USB but decided you want to go use the plotter as a serial, you can go into setup properties and actually click on that tab and then change it to whatever serial port you want to use. And here you, you get the baud rate and all the different features or all the different protocols for your serial port. I'm going to go ahead and go back and change it to my Graphtec USB and then go ahead and click OK. Also, and I mentioned this before, that if you need to test the communication between the, the software and the plotter, you can just do this test cut, which means you don't have to use Illustrator to do all that, you or Corel Draw. You can just go come into Cutting Master 2, hit test cut, and it'll automatically send it to your plotter. Okay, these buttons are basically the five buttons you're going to use most. Um, obviously, the trash can is delete. The stop is to stop the job immediately. This is the send job, which means it sends the job to the plotter or the file. This will save the job, and then this will open a job. So let's say, for instance, you have a job that works out really nicely, and you want to keep it. And, and uh, it, it's for a customer that does repeat business on the same job. So what you can do is you can actually save it. Now I've already saved a certain job that two components text that you saw earlier. It's a matter of clicking open and then finding your job. Click on it. Click on add and there we have it. Now everything is highlighted so I can do what I want. I can either send it, I can later on stop it, or I can delete it. So as you can see, Cutting Master 2 is a very simple program to use, and it shouldn't be any complication. The one thing I wanted to bring out is in case if for some reason you run into a problem where you have to stop the plotter. The steps are to stop the plotter is to pause the plotter first, and then immediately come to this queue and stop the job here, and then go back to the plotter and clear the buffer. If you don't do that, if you stop the plotter then clear the buffer, what happens is if this is still sending data to the plotter, you'll clear the buffer all day, but it'll just keep plotting because it's still filling up. So just something to keep in mind. Here I've got a simple image of a the Graphtec Cutting Master 2 logo. Well, it's not really a logo, I just typed in the text. But, but then we have a simple cut line and I'm going to be making a decal. Now you saw earlier uh, with magnetic how we were able to go ahead and cut around the contour and so forth and we did that all in Cutting Master 2. I wanted to show how to set up Illustrator, Adobe Illustrator and Corel Draw most effectively when using with Cutting Master 2. Now in this case here I've got uh, something that's going to be print and then I've got the rectangle, rounded corner rectangle as being my cut line. This is gonna, I'm going to make a decal out of this or as I said in magnetic make some kind of sign. 
So how would I set this up to be most effective to using through Cutting Master 2? Well, let me show you. First, I want to separate this, the Cutting Master 2 and GraphTech to be printed, and then obviously the line, this line to be cut. So what I'm talking about here are two different layers. I couldn't cut by color because I've got three colors. So we can do it by layers. So here's what I'll do. First thing I'll do is I'll take this layer menu. By the way, if you don't have that showing, if you go up to window up here and go down to layers and you can see the hotkey is F7. So I've got my layers and, I, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this to, I'll do, I double clicked on it, and I'm going to change this to print. Okay, now everything's on the print layer, but I want to create another layer. That's this little button right here. So I go ahead and click on that, and I double click on that, and I say, I'll call this cut layer. Okay, so I've got a print layer and a cut layer. Now I have to get all my cut data, this rectangle, onto the cut layer. How do I do this? Well, I just go ahead and choose it, and there's a couple ways you can do it. The easiest way is that when I select it, you'll notice that the print layer, because it's on, currently on the print layer right now, is highlighted. But you see this little dot at the end? If I just click on that and drag that up to here, now it's on the cut layer. Well, let's check this out. If I turn off the print layer, then you see the rectangle is the only thing that's left. So that's basically all there is. If you forget how to do that, oftentimes you can just right click on this, on the <laughs> right click on the object, go down to the menu, where it says arrange and then send to current layer and so you would select the cut layer and then go ahead and send it but once again the easiest way is to take this dot and just drag it to the to the layer that you want once again you highlight the object and then you drag the dot so now if I go to my cutting master 2 open cut plot go to my layers and there's the two layers I set up and once again, I can go ahead and set up one for different types of cutting. For instance, I can select this for uh, for the creasing, not that I'd ever want to, and this for some other layer. And it'll automatically send everything down automatically as we learned earlier so that you can understand how registration marks work. But just know this, when you print something out and you try to place it on the cutter, it has to have registration marks because the registration marks acts as somewhat of a mapping program to let the plotter know where everything is to be cut. We need to create registration marks so that the graph tech can understand them. Now I'm not talking about any registration marks, I'm talking about graph tech registration marks and that's all part of Cutting Master 2. Watch what I do. I go up here to File and I come back down here to Cutting Master 2 as we did earlier but instead of going to Cut Plot I go to Registration Marks. This is where it will actually create the registration marks that I need. Now what it's going to do is it's going to look over all the objects here and then create the registration marks just outside those objects. So here I have different types of registration I can use. GraphTech Type 1, go ahead and click on those and you can see the type of registration marks they are. I prefer Type 2 just because of the fact that you get more room with them. You get more cutting area or area to design in. So I click on Type 2, and there they are. So now I've got my registration marks. Let me pull this out of the way for you. Now I've got my registration marks. Now I'm able to go ahead and print those out. Now when I send it to the printer, obviously I would turn off my cut lines, because you don't want to uh, have it print out that cut line if you, unless you're trying to look for dead on accuracy and trying to put the plotter to the test, but I would turn it off. So there's my registration marks. You can see that it puts an extra layer up here, and this layer actually tells well, actually records the distance between these registration marks. I'll explain this later in the print and cut section. But for now, it's just information that it can send down to the plotter to allow the plotter to know, here's the map, here's the distances, and go for it. Okay, let me back up a little bit. You see the registration marks here and how they were placed. Maybe you don't like the gap between this, this area. Maybe you want to save some room on the between the registration marks and the the cutter so what we can do is let me go ahead and undo and I undo again this time what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a rectangle and I'm just gonna drag it kinda make it tight around the, the object so I can save as much room as possible and there we go now 
what I then can do is I can go to my, my Cutting Master 2 registration marks and this time what I'll do is I'll click on this little convert rectangle I'll go ahead and print the registration marks and notice you've saved a lot of room. Well there's some other features to the registration marks making them. Let's go ahead and go back to our dialog box here on registration marks. First we showed, that, showed you how we could choose the different types But let me show you some of these other options. Obviously you can set your uh, units to inches, but you can also set your margin. Now once again this will reduce, this will only reduce it to a certain amount because it will calculate how much margin it feels comfortable with is the best way of describing it. So once again if you have that issue but you need the registration mark a little closer then draw a rectangle as I just showed you and then convert the rectangle. Thickness is the thickness of the registration marks and this is all dependent upon uh, the kind of material that you're using. For instance, if you're planning to laminate over the graphic I would recommend that you uh, increase the thickness of the registration marks. They'll go up to 0.4. Also, if it's a longer job, typically you'd want to go ahead and make the registration marks a little bit longer just because of its ability to find them and there's longer lines there enabling it to catch those registration marks. On a flatbed, typically you won't have that issue too much because um, you pretty much have like rulers that allow you to set it straight. So I click OK and you can see how the registration marks are now laid down. They're a little bit longer, a little bit thicker, and we can go ahead and print that out and send it to the plotter. Let me show you uh, Corel Draw and how the layers can be set up there because you recall layers are very important when you're using Cutting Master 2 as I showed you in Illustrator. The be easiest way of doing this is first to turn on the layers well they really don't call it layers, they call it Object Manager but we go to Dockers, we go to Object Manager and there's a list of all our different layers for this particular job or design. Now we only have one layer so let's go ahead and create some more first I want to get a simple view so let's go ahead and click on this button that says layer manager view and make it more simple now let me go ahead and change the name of this layer one to print and the way I do this is I click once and just hold, hover it over it and there it goes if you try to double click it won't work you click and hover over have the uh, pointer hover over the, uh, the layer one and I dial in print Now while you weren't looking, I actually created a rounded rectangle, a rounded corner rectangle here because that's going to be our cut line. So once again I have to create a secondary layer and call it cut. So let me go ahead and do that now by clicking down here for new layer and it goes ahead and asks me what I want to call it so I'll call this cut. Oops, cut. So now I've got a print layer and I've got the cut layer and I suspect that everything is on the print layer if I hit the eyeball here that tells me to turn it off so I can't see it it everything turns off so I need to get this cut line right there onto the into the cut layer it's very simple to do what you do is you hover over it act as if you're gonna drag it someplace but just drag it up into that layer and drop it and that's all you do so once again if I turn it off you see it's now on the cut layer now I'm pretty much set and I'm ready to go. Now with Illustrator uh, and Corel Draw, it, it's the same thing that works with the layers. Uh, whether you're cutting or creasing, if you're setting up different layers for different types of cut, it's the top one that's going to matter most. Let me show you that. Here I've created two lines um, and what I want to do is this is basically going to be a decal where I'm cutting on some kind of vinyl where the first cut, the inside cut, is going to cut through the vinyl and then the second cut I'm going to set up the four so it cuts all the way through. So this means I have to create another layer be beyond what I just did. So let's go ahead and do that. I'll go ahead and create another layer. This time I'll call it CT, meaning cut through. And I'll hit enter. So once again I have to take this cut through line and put it on a cut through layer. So it's just a matter of like, like I did with the cut line is just drag it up into the CT and drop it. So once again if I turn it off it's now part of the cut through layer. Now let's see how this is, works in Cutting Master 2. Once again I go to our, my launcher, I click on it and I go to cut plot. Now let me go to my layers tab and there's the three. 
but you see what's happening here is that the cut through layer is on top of the cut layer is on top of the print now the print I don't want to cut so I'll turn that off but something's wrong here the way this works is whatever's on the top layer on the top here is what's going to cut first well I certainly don't want my cut through layer to be cut first uh, because obviously if it cuts all the way through the material is going to fall out and it won't be able to come back and cut through so I want to set my cut to be on top so how can I do this well let me click on done get back to my corel draw and then this time what I'm going to do is take the CT and then just drag it down below the cut so that the cut is on top layer over the cut through layer and once again I go to my launcher I click on cut plot and there it is let's go to my layers and so now I have my cut on top of my cut through so what I do here now is I go ahead and take my cut layer and assign it to a cut layer uh, excuse me a cut condition that I set up previously with setting to condition 1 force of 20 a certain speed and quality so they'll go ahead and cut that first at that particular force then it'll follow up with a cutting through which I've already set up and there it is and with a higher force that enables it to cut through the backing and now I'm able to do this whole job in one single swoop both the cut and then come back and do the cut through it's just a little uh, situation that you could take advantage of and the biggest thing is is to enable your driver options now creating registration marks with Corel Draw is similar to the way it is in Illustrator in that if you click up here to launch go to registration marks it will bring up the registration mark and once again you choose the type that you want uh, all the values that you want to set and then you just click OK and then it goes ahead and creates those registration marks for you now you see how far out they are from the the graphic and it's really something I don't want now typically in Illustrator I would just go control Z but you can see it's not going to do anything I have to keep con hitting control Z till I get rid of that the better way of doing it of getting rid of it and going back is to click on the layer that was been created with the registration marks go ahead and click on it and then right click and then delete and I'll go ahead and delete those registration marks for you just a little trick so once again it's just a matter of tightening the registration marks around the graphic so I can create my rectangle as I did I can go to my launch go to registration marks and once again this time I'll convert the rectangle and it takes that rectangle and takes the exact values or ex exact size and distance and that's in each corner is where it's going to put a registration mark so I click OK and there it goes create, building those registration marks that we need now I'm ready to print this out and then cut it and I'm all set I would highly recommend that you review the video segment of print and cut because it'll really give you some good insights as to how registration marks work and why we need them. Well, let's get back to the plugin and show you some of the details about this plugin and so you can get familiar with it. First, let's start at the top here. These two buttons right here are basically dealing with the driver that you're using. As you can see, in, and that's grayed out, the FC2250-60 on the USB. Now, if I wanted to change that port, I could click on Properties, or if I just want to get into the queue again, the Cutting Master queue, I can just press this button here. This is the orientation of the plotter, supposedly. Uh, I don't trust this because on certain machines it really doesn't give you the exact format. So I'm going to show you how you look at the screen over here as to what the format. But let me let me get into the other values first. Remember we got four tabs. Uh, the first one is dealing with your sizing, your media size, and those kind of aspects. Any number that you change on here or any value with most of them except for a few it'll actually show up. This is your display window. This actually gives you an idea of how the material is, I mean, how the job is going to lay out on the table. Now currently, right now, the plotter says it's 
it's 24 inches, which it is, by 1,968, which is wrong, but it's it's actually shorter. I can actually change this. What I can do is I can actually go to user defined, and I know my table is maybe 36 inches possibly, so I'll type in 36. So now, down here, it'll actually show that 36. If I scroll up, you see how it just ends right there. So now, this job, you can see how it is actually going to lay out how, what size it's going to be when it lays out onto the table or onto your material. Now, that's another thing, too, is you can actually put the size of your material. So if I have a 12 inch by 12 inch piece of material, I can type in 12 inch, 12 inches, and then 12 inches here hit tab and you see immediately the white space showing what my media is and then how this cutting master or this graphic that I'm going to do is fitting into that that material which is very helpful very useful for a visual look at it now there's just one more feature that I want to want to show you and that's this button here if you're not sure as to what size your plotter has and like say you're covering the whole sheet you can actually press this and what this button does is it goes out to the plotter says how big are you and it comes back and fills in these particular uh, values for you watch how this is done I go ahead and click on it and there it actually changes the values for you it went out into the plotter and said how big are you and then it placed the numbers in here and then reflect the size in relationship to the to the actual graphic real powerful button to have especially if you want to just make sure you're you have the right size next is the job size which is basically what sizing this is now above is the media size so we were talking about the actual media but if you want to actually change the job size so for instance like say if uh, my cutting master 2 I want it a little bit bigger maybe I wanted it to be like uh, 8 inches um, 8 inches across and I don't care how high I type in 8 I press enter and you see how the value changes in both of them and that's because I've got this proportional. If I took this off, I could actually stretch it out to 8 by 8 if I wanted to, which would give me some really weird effects. But anyway, nonetheless, you can see how that works. I can also size it by percentage. Like right now, it's 100%. So if I wanted to make it a little bit larger, perhaps like a 125%, I could do that, and it would actually increase it, and it would change the values over here. Now, I would be careful on these values because once you get out of Cutting Master and you're in the same job, it'll keep that 125%. And so all of a sudden you'll see that your cutting is much larger than it was supposed to be. And I would always check this value. It's usually always better to resize your job within Illustrator or within Corel Draw rather than do it in here, only because this sticks and inevitably, I know it happens to me, you forget you've changed it and sure enough, the next job, it's, it's oversized or undersized because this is not at 100%. Just a little food for thought there. You can also fit it to media, so if you wanted to f scale out to the size of the media, you could do that. If we get down to the position, these are some neat features to this uh, program that I really enjoy. First, the position going side to side and the position going up and down. Now, let me come over here and just let you know that you can literally put your hand over it and then grab it and then drag the job wherever you want it on the material. And you can see that these numbers will actually change. So let's like, say, for instance, I want it from this corner, one inch by one inch margin. I can just type in one inch by one inch and there I have it. Now so you see you can do it both mathematically by putting in the values or you can do it visually by dragging it in the visual window here. Now some of these other features are interactive. These are two features that I really enjoy because it kinda gives you an idea of what's going on. Um, when I click on this what will happen is it will actually move the table, move the head table to that position. This corner position right here, if I turn on this immediately the plotter will shift right over to this position and everything and you can see this you can play around with this on your on your own and see how it works so that's that and what it does is it is it actually as you drag that job around it will actually tell the plotter to move the head to that point so you can visually see on the plotter where it's going to start at really great feature for those of you who are unsure as to where, where it's going to start, which means most of us. This one is a show me, which means it'll take the total width and height of the job and tell the plotter to not plot out, but just make the movement of 
that size. So you can visually see what's not only where the position is with this particular button, you can actually have it show you how big it's going to be, which is also a nice feature. This is just basically asking you where do you want to position it? Do you want to position it in the center, on the bottom? You want it in the center of the, of the material? Um, you have different options. You can play with that. Typically I keep them in the lower left. Rotate is exactly what it is. How do you want to rotate it? And you can see you got four different choices. This actually mirrors it. So if you if you're doing like vinyl or some type of material that you need to reverse it, you don't have to do it in your software. I would actually do it here because it's much easier, much quicker. A really helpful tool. Of course, we come down here to copies. Now, in an earlier part of the one of the videos, I was talking about the copy function on the plotter. And I was mentioning that on the plotter, when you say multiple copies on the same job, it's, it's really better to do it in the software. And here's why. Watch what happens when I put in this value. Let's say I need uh, perhaps about 10. So I'll type in a 0 here and hit Tab. And you can see, now I can visually see how many copies are going to be, or how they're going to be laid out on the job. Now I can also change the spacing, of course in here it would be a little bit too tight, but once again I get that visual look as to how it's going to lay out on, on the table. Now going back up to this window, the media size, this is where the media size and copies can work in conjunction because now I know exactly what the representation of my media size and how my graphic relates size-wise to that media. So here I can see, yeah, I can fit 10 in there. Now, let me go ahead and decrease it to 5. Okay, and now I can even change the value of the distance between each of the copies. So once again, you can see the value of doing the copies within the, the program because, like I said, you can visually see it. You know exactly what you're going to get. It's a WYSIWYG type of situation. Now let's go ahead and get real crazy here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to reduce the size a little bit. Now you'll see why in just a second. Let me keep reducing this. Okay, now now that the job is small enough and I'm taking into account the spacing in between, you see how it'll make more efficient use of the uh, media, which is uh, fantastic because it saves you, it saves you money. I can even reset this to point 0.1 and even get more and then actually I can just go ahead and start increasing the number of copies. So you can see you can play around with that. Now I just put all these values and you think to yourself, oh man, you know, I just I set all those values and now I really need to need to get it back to where it was. Especially as a habit, getting this back to where to 100 percent otherwise you could get erroneous results. Well, that's this button here. You just press reset and it resets everything back to, to what you originally had. Except for the page size. It'll keep the page size, which is, believe me, it's kind of convenient. Hold on this is that when I send the job, it will actually hold it in the queue. It will not send it. If I don't check that, what it'll do is it'll send it to the Cutting Master queue and then immediately send it to the plotter. So it just depends on what you're doing. If you haven't loaded the material yet, I would click on this and then go ahead and send it. Selection only is if in, you're an illustrator and you've selected a couple pieces. If you want the, just those pieces, you can click on that. If not, then make that make sure that's unchecked. These are your zoom tools. This is a neat zoom tool because of the fact that you can zoom exactly onto your graphic so you can actually see it. This will allow you to see the whole page. This one will actually allow you to click where you want to see and then this is your pointer. So some kind of neat tools for this particular tab. Once again, once you change all these settings, or any settings you change up here, it automatically reflects here, which is great about this program because it gives you a visual, immediate visual of how it's going to lay on your material. I would start with the size of your media size, I would then do your job size, and then position size. One of the other things I wanted to mention about this display here is the fact that a lot of times you're looking at this and you're thinking, well, what, what's the orientation? How is this going to cut out onto my, uh, onto my plotter? Well, let me overlay the table so that it clears up any misunderstanding because this little diagram up here doesn't do anything because sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but it doesn't give you the right orientation. So let me show you that now. Just keep in mind that the up and down is the x direction on your plotter and you recall that's 
if you called in the earlier videos I showed what that was on the plotter and then going across is your y direction so if you're if you were looking at this over here would be down here would be your control panel your y bar would be going across this way and so it just kind of helps you visualize it because when you're looking at this you think well okay how is it like I said how is it going to cut well just keep that in mind Hey, let me switch over to the layer tab. Now, this tab is very powerful, uh, using it in several different ways. Let me show you. I'm going to take a simple job here, and what I've done, let me zoom in on the job, is I've got two colors. I've got the Graphics in a Graphic Blue, and then Cutting Master 2's in a bright red. You can see those two colors right up here as they're represented by RGB and CYMK. Now, what I can do here is I can select which color I want to cut first. You know, obviously we don't want to cut them on the same uh, material, so we may have two different t uh, color material that we want to cut them on. So, uh, what I would do is maybe I want to cut the red first, and then there it is. So then I go ahead and send the job, and then I go ahead and turn that off and turn on the, the graphic blue, put in that material of that color and then hit the send job and and I'm pretty much done. Now what I can also do is have them both come down and you notice this little check mark that says pause between colors or layers then once again it will go ahead and plot out the red and then it will have a little message on the screen to put in the second vinyl. Now when you send the job at like this you can see here right in the, it's already plotted out the first job but now it's paused between colors and layers press skip to go to the next color or click OK so you can go to the next um, the next layer or the next color I'll click on OK and I'll click on OK again so as you can see you can set it up so it sends all the jobs and it'll pause the machine uh, before it sends the next color now you can also cut by layer too as well. Now give me a minute to bring in a, a second job here. Hold on. Now here's a second job that I'm going to show you that really shows out the example of how layers, cutting by layers, can really work. Here I've actually got a design for a package or a small little box that I'm going to cut out in shipboard. Now what's nice about this is you'll notice that I've set up three different layers. I've set up a cut layer a crease layer and a print layer. So what I want to do is everything that's on the cut layer I want it to cut. Everything that's on the crease layer I want it to crease. Here's my job. Let's see and then whatever okay let's start over. Whatever's in the cut layer I want it to cut. Whatever's on the crease layer I want it to crease that those lines and then whatever is on the print layer I want that to print out. So obviously I'm going to be printing this out bringing it to the cutter and allow it to cut these lines. So it'll print out the graph tech watch. I'll take it, take the crease and the cut layer off and that's what's going to print right there. So now I can go ahead and add in my crease lines and cut lines and send the whole thing down, the whole job down. Now here's where the power of cutting mess really comes in. As you can see I've got the cut layer and the crease layer. Now obviously I don't want to send the print layer because I don't want it to cut it up. So now I've got the cut layer and the crease layer. And I can go ahead and send them down and, and then switch between conditions, have it pause between the different uh, uh, layers. You know, I, I'll have it sent down the cut layer and then have it pause and then send down the crease layer, which is great. That's fine. But here's a great feature that's on, the, on this uh, software. Let me go ahead and take it off pause between layers and colors. But let me go ahead and enable the driver options. <clears throat> now it's currently on my plotter right now, my FC2250, is that I've got set condition 4 for my cutting and condition 8 for my creasing. And as you recall in earlier vid part of the video where I could switch between the two conditions, what the software will do here is it will actually tell the plotter to go ahead and switch between the conditions. What's great about this is you can set up as many conditions as you want. What you do is you set all your values, what condition you're going to use, and the reason they have condition you know one through eight up here is that perhaps a certain condition has thick sheet mode and you can take advantage of that where it will turn on thick sheet but anyway 
So you've got your condition, you've got whatever speed you want to set up, the force and the quality exactly on the conditions, and it'll switch to that condition and set that force and speed and quality to those values. Great little feature here. Now what I've done is I went ahead and set up two different conditions, one for cutting and one for creasing. So what I do is I go ahead and check, select my cut layer up here, then I go ahead and set my cutting condition because I want it to switch to the cutting condition for all the lines that are on the on the cut layer. And then for my crease layer, once again, I set up another creasing condition, or I set up a creasing condition specifically for that. And now when all those lines that are on that layer are sent down to the plotter, it'll switch it to that condition, set the values as we see uh, set up here, and then go ahead and do a nice creasing. And there's one other feature. You recall on the plotter that there's a feature called overlay where each single line will get plotted repeatedly. Well, I can actually turn that off. And like for creasing, I know it takes about six or seven passes before I get a decent crease, like say in corrugated. Well, I can go ahead and increase the number of passes for each cut. This is such a powerful feature because you have all the control right here. This number of passes can apply to those of you who do really thick materials. Maybe hard where you do have to do a double cut or triple cut. So consequently this is a nice little feature to have in order to control everything from your software rather than having to go back and forth to your plotter to set up the different conditions. But you know sometimes it depends on your workflow. Maybe it's better to do it from the, the plotter, setting up your conditions, going over there and switching them out because obviously you're going to go be going to the plotter to switch out the material anyway so while you're there why not switch to that particular condition. But if you have a feature or you have a situation like this where you have to do um, cutting where you have two different levels, uh, two different levels of forces, two different types of tools, and you're doing on the same material and you don't want to have to switch between the heads and switch between the conditions from the control panel on the plotter. This is a great way and it's all automatic. It'll all switch and everything is taken care of for you. Really nice, nice feature. Okay, well let me switch over to the Layers tab. And something that you have to learn about this is that with being with a flatbed, in most cases, this probably won't be needed unless you have very large jobs that you have to split up. And if that's the case, uh, you can use this, obviously use this tab. Now let's start with the panel size. This panel right here, or this section right here. This basically says what pan panel size you want. Now if I, I can just grab any one of these little red uh, grab handles and then just size what I want to cut. So let's say if I just want to cut this uh, cutting word. And if you notice go I go back to my original, my general tab, you can see that's the only thing that is going to be cutting. So you can see what the panel size actually does. It actually sizes the panel that you're going to cut. So here I've resized it back up its size. This value up here is just the value of the margin size. That's the distance between the actual graphic and the actual uh, panel line as to where the panel lays. So obviously the larger this number, the wider this panel gets. Now if you have an, an image that's obviously larger than your table, well let me show you. Let's go ahead and simulate that. You notice I set, the, set this to 300 percent. I'm going to set it to 900 percent just to get it really large. Okay, there we go. Now let's go back to the panel page and you can see here that it actually paneled it into two panels automatically. What's represented by this dark line in the visual screen here represents the size of the media that you set or the table size that we set on the first on the general tab. That's where we decided what size of the media or the table that we're using. Now I can select which panel I would like to choose. If Say for instance I want one or not the other. It's just a matter of double clicking on which one you want. In this case you would have to do that because of being a flatbed. I want to do the first panel and then the second panel after that. Well I'd go ahead and double click in this panel here and see how it marks it out, leaving just this panel to go ahead and cut. Of course I double click it again and you can see it it turns off and then I can switch to this one once I have this cut and double click on that and it'll turn it off. So that's about as much paneling as we're going to do. The only thing I'm also going to show you is how you can 
have this done automatically or set up more panels in case you wanted to go ahead instead of two make it four so it make it easier to put them put the sign or whatever image you're trying to do and the way we do that is I'd go ahead and click on this little tab and I'd say I want two panels and see right there it automatically switched it up into four panels so here we we select the the tile that we want here we choose how many tiles we would like to have in other words for forcing more tiles than than there really is or more pa panels now if I want to set those tiles to a certain size I can just check mark here dial in my number here say if I want it 10 inches and there it is it went ahead and make the tile 10 inches but you can see it created more of the tiles and that's true with the Y or the distance currently I have two panels I can make that three if I wanted to or even more as many as I want obviously I'm overdoing it, but I'm just showing you the point or I can actually set the value or the distance you see how the lines match that or will how the lines will move according to the distance that I want so those are just some of the minor things about paneling. The one only you know, other thing I wanted to show you is the overlap and that's just in case if you are doing some kind of vinyl where you have to overlap the vinyl um, if you're out in the, if the vinyl is out in the sun is that you really want to make sure that you overlap it and this will give you a point two inches almost a quarter inch so that if it stretches you won't see a crack and seam between the panels. Let me switch over to the advanced tab and show you a couple things on here that you need to know. Now I'm not going to go to every setting here because some of this doesn't apply to the flatbed but let me show you a couple things. First if you're cutting reflective um, you may be interested in this particular feature of the weed lines. Now a weed border actually puts a square around the uh, graphic automatically so it makes it just easier to weed, easier to pull out the material. You can make it easier to weed. For instance, you've got these horizontal weed lines. If I click on that, watch what happens. It automatically puts a cut line right across there. So it makes it so that I can just pull off one strip and then pull off the other. You also can do vertical lines. Now with vertical lines and horizontal lines, what it does is it looks for an area where it's actually going to be able to put a line straight on through. If it can't find one, it won't put one down. So if I click on vertical weed lines, it may not find one. There you go. It found uh, one, two, three four different areas where we could actually make the weeding a little bit easier. So that's what weeding is all about. Next is optimized cutting order. Now this is different from the sorting routine in the sense that it's just uh, when you click on speed priority it's going to organize things to keep up the best speed for the plotting. Now restricted media movement basically it says media movements that's more like for a roll feed cutter but in case of a flatbed it just restricts the amount of movement that the head is going to do and it just depends on what your process is but here's here's the general rule about this if you are cutting with tool one and tool two on the flatbed I would suggest not using this because the sorting routine does a much better job in in gathering all things together for what's to go to tool one and tool two but if you're just using one general cutting cutting tool then obviously this would be a better way of going because it's just it's it's going to be handled through software and uh, so you you can make the decision and and it's best to uh, go ahead and experiment with this in case if you're in a real high production and you want to get the things out and so forth it, it may help you out uh, a couple other simple things that you need to know about um, uh, obviously units and in inches and whatever units you want to use but this after output what does that mean well it says hold and the other choice is delete what this is is a way of telling cutting master 2 what do you want to do with the job after I've sent it to the plotter do you want to delete it off your computer or would you like me to hold on to it I generally like to have hold just in case if I need to run a job again but that's up to you now as far as step size just keep in mind that with regards to steps I'm going to make this kind of simple just so that you know that this number here has to match the number on the plotter here's what happens if you get a job and you output it and it's like double the size of what it's supposed to be or half the size in other words scaling issues are happening check with the step size make sure it matches the plotter because if it doesn't you will get scaling issues very large scaling issues and very small scaling issues but you will get scaling issues so just keep that in mind 
For further information on the subject, please review the following pages of the FC 2250 manual. Now, if you have any questions, please feel free to email us at our email address, which is tech.support at graphtechamerica.com, or call us at 888-318-3247.